Hi, I'm Chad Saladin. This is my wife, Chris, and we are Peregrine Falcon Fanatics. Uh, we have monitored peregrines for over 20 years with the Ohio Division of Wildlife. Um, but they no longer monitor, but we still, we still watch them and photograph them and, and do programs about them. Uh, we actually started watching them in the mid to late 90s. Um, the first pair in Cleveland was the Terminal Tower, so we'd go down there a little bit, Public Square, watch a little bit, but at that time it wasn't the greatest spot to watch them. So when a pair showed up in the late 90s at Rocky River Metro Parks, that's when we really got into watching. And once we started really learning about them and watching them, they were just, they hooked us. Uh, I mean, it was just an amazing bird to watch. And now we've been doing it, like like I said, 20 plus years. Um, uh, um, <laughs> They're just such fascinating birds to watch, yeah. <laughs> and we really enjoy going from site to site, seeing all that they do. Um, we started off just by watching them purely uh, from safe distances and seeing their different behaviors and, and without any camera equipment or anything like that. And then uh, after a little while, we started saying we really need to try to capture what these birds are able to do and, and really try to find a way to, to show people what they're capable of and, and just how dynamic they are and how much personality they they have and everything else. So we uh, we started off with digiscoping with you buying a little camera and trying to shoot through a spotting scope and just trying to get some images that way and of course that was not quite satisfying because we weren't capturing them in the air and um, so we turned to photography and um, neither one of us consider ourselves photographers. Uh, that's not why we got into it. We really got into uh, photographing them because we wanted to capture moments in their lives and uh, things that were special to us. So. Um, so we've always tried to follow these birds, monitor their behaviors, pay attention to what's going on with them and learn about them. And we're always learning something new about them. It's been fascinating. So the, the uh, pictures and things help us to do that. And when we, when we first started monitoring, there were only 12 known pairs in the state. Now we're getting close to 40. So they're, they're coming back really well. Uh, Cleveland, the Cleveland area is a hot spot. We have 11 pairs in the general Cleveland area. Um, there's only, we visit about five or six pairs regularly, but uh, we'll check on other pairs and we still keep all the stats and uh, you know we still keep all the information about them. Um, we still enjoy it as much as we did when we started. Yeah. We got to see ourselves as stewardesses, stewards of, of the species um, as much as possible. They uh, certainly have made a major comeback. It's one of the best comeback stories of all time. Uh, in the animal kingdom and uh, it's such an important bird for wildlife and environmental protections and things and that story is huge in itself. We could go on and on about the DDT era and the recovery and how they've gotten to this point where their population is now stable. Yeah. Um, it, well, it, it was actually the largest effort to restore an endangered species back to the wild. So yeah, it was, uh, it was just, a, just a great uh, effort. and. Uh, it was uh, a lot of people were involved in it. Uh, getting rid of DDT was it took six years to do that. Uh, fighting the farming in industry, and um, so once they got rid of DDT, then they started captive breeding, and they've really been uh, coming back. They released 7,000 in the six in the 70s and 80s, all all around North America. And now they're really showing up.